and maybe we can just take a rewind back to yeah. you're a college do dropout <laughs> getting into the real estate business 19. and then all of a sudden by 20 years old you're selling 150 homes a year why yep. don't you walk us through kind of what happened and and how you were able to do that and what what was it that finally clicked well, first of all, I think what you have to do, well, first of all, at 19, people that are younger in the business might be able to relate to this, that you, your sphere of influence is not buying houses, right? We always talk about sphere, sphere, sphere. Well, right. sphere of influence, my my buddies were out going keggers and you know, just <laughs> doing nothing but buying houses, I'll tell you that. So yeah. I had to figure it out. And so what I did is I started attending back then, um, I started attending every seminar I could get my hands on reading every book, you know, listening to all the, all the material I could. And what I figured out is that I had to really commit, commit myself to lead generation and figure out what lead generation would work for me best. So I, yeah. I basically latched on to three different styles, right? So the first thing is I, I really tackled for sell by owners. I became an absolute dominant leader in for sell by owners. I kind of tackled expired listings, became a dominant leader in expired listings in my market. And then I then pivoted, really did well with those things, but then I pivoted into doing uh, mass mailings. So as my career really began to launch, I did, uh, got, I ramped up to 8,000 pieces of mail a month. And so that really um, fueled my success for sure. And we can dive into each of those categories and I can walk you through exactly what I did if you want. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be actually amazing. So it's FISBOs, expired, expired listings, and then dropping mail pieces. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so, let's, let's go through means. those because, you know, I, I've definitely experienced doing all of those things. I was a uh, Mike Ferry agent in oh, you yeah. know, around, I want to say, probably 2005, 2006. But and all we did all day was call expired listings for sale by owners and things like that. So why yeah. don't we start there and uh, talk about, you know, kind of your approach and, and how you were able to have success with that? Yeah, and I will tell you that, um, you know, the way we did it, did it back then is all different than when we do it today. And the way I train agents today, I'll, I'll give you both versions. Okay. Perfect. So that people can say, Oh, wait a second. You know, there's some other technology we could apply to make this even more effective today. So um, the first thing with for sale by owners is yeah, everybody has to realize that 92% of them are going to list their house with someone. That's the stat. So when you drive it around and you see these for sale by owners, nine out of 10 of them are going to work with a realtor. It's just a question of who it's going to be you or your competitor. If you never make contact, it's never going to be you. So once you realize that and you say, Oh, <laughs> these people are all going to list their house. I just got to get in front of them. Then it's just a matter of tactics and strategy. Right? So for me, uh, my strategy was very simple. I would reach out and I'd say, Hey, my name's Jim. I'm with ABC real estate. And I saw your sign on the lawn this morning. I saw your ad in Craigslist. I saw your ad in Facebook Marketplace. I'm sure you're getting bombarded by a bunch of realtors, but I want to tell you this, and this is the key language. Listen, I'm not calling to list your house and I respect your decisions on your own. Okay. So just know that right up front. So now what we got is their defenses are coming down. Oh, okay. Love that. Yeah. Not going to try to take me down and you know talk me into selling. All I want to do is if you'll be open to it, let me take a five minute walk through the house to see if it fits any of my buyers. If you're cool with that, would you be cool with that? 80% of the time with that script, I get into the house. It, and it, it does have to do with your, your tonality. It has to do with how you approach it. People that come in real monotone and I've got, you know, or come in very cold or very, you know, just like it's, it's like they're a robot. That's not going to work. You have to be warm about it. Um, but most people say yes, 80%. So once I get to the house, people are like, okay, how do I move somebody from A, they are never listening with a realtor to Z, they're signing a contract with me. I mean, what's the, the gap there, right? So, uh, and I've listed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of for sale owners, so I can walk you exactly through this. So very simply, when I get to the house, I say, hey, thanks for letting me take a you know quick walk through the house. I promise you I'm not going to ask you to list the house, and I'm not. Um, but can I ask you just a few questions about you know the house itself? And they're going to say, yeah. yeah. And the best thing, you know, if you wouldn't mind, just give me a chef's tour. Now, I don't know what a chef's tour is. <laughs> I picked it up at some point, but it just sounded good to me, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, I'll give you a tour. And so I would walk to the house and I'd ask them, you know, the very basic questions, who, how, what, you know, Hey, tell me, you know, how long have you guys lived here? We've lived here five years. What have you done to the house since you've been here? You know, did you know people, you know, in the market or what made you choose this neighborhood over all the neighborhoods you could have chosen? Right. So get into it. You know, I really like this. Did you add this? You should take it away. So what you were doing in this process is we're learning about the house and I'm taking detailed notes. So it doesn't look like I'm just phoning it in. I'm also asking permission to take photos if I if they allow me to, if it's a nice house and it warrants it. 
Um, but by the time we wrap up, I'm going to, I'm going to be in there five or 10 minutes. And usually it's not that usually it's 20 minutes to an hour to two hours. Um, and as I'm wrapping up, I'm going to again say, Hey, I promise I wasn't going to ask you to list the house, but can I ask you one quick question? If you're not successful selling on your own, do you think at any point you might work with a realtor? Mm, they're going to, they're going to say, great question. They're going to say, eh, you know, yeah, maybe most of them say, yeah, maybe. I'll say, well, how long do you think you might give that? We'll give that two weeks, two months, two years, 10 years. <laughs> what are you thinking? And I say it just that lightly. Smile, laugh, have fun with it. And be like, eh, the most common answer, I'm going to give it a couple months. Totally get it. Here's what I'd like to do with you, if you with your permission, is I just want to stay in contact with you. Make sure the house is still available every week. Just give me a quick call. And then if I have a buyer, I will definitely bring them over and I'll try to show it. And I'll try to sell it. And then if you decide at one point you want to hire a realtor, I'd love to be somebody, somebody interviewed for the job. Is that all cool? Mm -hmm. They say yes. Yeah. And by the way, since I've been here, now I'm going to start adding value. And by the way, since I've been here, uh, I don't know if anybody's done it for you, um, but would you like a list of your most recent competition coming into the market? Now, I could say give them a buyer a CMA, but everybody's offering them CMA. And CMA is like the ham sandwich of real estate. Everybody's offering a ham sandwich. And nobody cares. Right? It gives a crap about the CMA. And they don't even need it. They can get that online now. So I'm going to say, would you like to see your most recent competition, including other for sale by owners? And they'll be like, yeah, I would like to see that. Great. I'll shoot that over to you. I'll show you every, I show the top 10 listings that I think you're competing with. And I'll, and I'll tell you that who I think is the strongest competitor, which will be really mm -hmm. interesting for you to see. Mm -hmm. And now I've built some relationship. And then what happens now is the key metric here is that the average for sale by owner will list their house. They'll get frustrated enough within four to six weeks. They'll, whatever number they say will go out the window. Most for sale by owners come to a realtor in four to six weeks. The other stat behind this is 70% will list with the realtor that contacts them closest to their decision to go with a realtor. Mm. So you could have had a great relationship day one when they first came to market. Doesn't matter if three weeks later, they didn't make the decision and you're not right there. The next realtor comes in. It's just easier to go with that realtor that's close to them. So every week now I got to be following up. And my follow-up process is key. Fortune is in the follow-up. The path is in the yeah. math, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be on the phone up once a week. And I'm going to say, hey, just checking with you guys. How's it going? Any activity going on in the house? They're going to tell me whatever. Hey, listen, I just want to give you a quick update on your neighborhood because I'm I'm close to this. I've seen this data all the time. I just want to say what's happening with your peer group. You got two listings that just hit the market that are kind of similar to yours. I'm going to shoot you those on an email if you don't mind. And you can mm -hmm. check them out and see what you think. We got one that went pending and we had one that closed. And I'm going to shoot you all that information for you just so you can check it out. Um, you know, and then I'm just going to conversation light. And that's it. I just, I'm a light touch. I'm not closing, closing, closing. The biggest mistake yeah, agents yeah. make is trying to close these people. You're yeah. never going to close them like that. They're going to run the other way and they're going to list with someone else. It's all about the relationship building. So that's totally. my little, I could go on and on and on about that, but that's my. No, I, that's, that's, that's an incredible pitch and an incredible approach. Um, it's very soft. It's very non-threatening. Yep. Um, it's very friendly, you know, Hey, is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to list your house. Like I like that right out the gate because yep. you're taking their defenses down. Hey, is it cool if I just come over and check it out? Maybe it fits one of my buyers. I love that. Cause now you're in the house, you're able to build rapport, you're able to have really good conversations. And then, um, again, I like your, you know, very nonchalant approach of like, Hey, if you were ever going to sell it, like, do you have a realtor that you would use? Maybe yes, maybe no. And then uh, I really like the approach of how you're following up with these people with just, hey, let me show you what your competition is doing. Because, again, you're adding value before asking for anything. And then, like you said, as long as you just continue on that follow up, you know st statistically that in the next month or two, they're going to end up listing with a realtor. And to your point, if you're the closest one that's contacting them when they make that decision, then you're all of a sudden the go-to person. Yeah, it, and it absolutely works.